All right, so here's the kind of overview I promised you guys. One thing to note is right here, I've actually got my four terabyte hard drives installed. These came in between the two Titan installation and you know this part of the video. So uh, here you guys go. You can see I've got them mounted in the uh, quick mount bays at the bottom here. They're the uh, Seagate desktop four terabyte editions. Uh, they're 5,900 RPM drives. Yes, 5,900, not 5,400. Um, so they're kind of a good balance of performance and reliability drives. I've had two terabyte 5,900 drives in the past and they were just outstanding. So uh, I decided to go with these ones this time instead of spring for uh, kind of like the more expensive um, Western digital uh, versions uh, and I do have two here uh, and like I said they're in the uh, hot swap bays so the ports are actually in the back there all plugged in and everything and I've already got these configured in a RAID 1 mirror so I've got those in there and I have expansion for two more hard drives if I wish I have my SSDs in these bays up here my two Samsung 840 Pros um, so that's basically what's up uh, going on in the hard drive slash SSD area. Uh, moving on up, the five and a quarter inch bays were completely empty. I'm leaving that open for uh, my water cooling stuff that I'm probably going to be doing in the future, the custom loop. Um, so yeah, there's nothing really in there. I may put in a bay reservoir or some kind of uh, flow meter type display on the front of the like the front of the system so that I can control that kind of stuff from there, maybe a fan controller. So these are open for expandability in the future. There's no optical drive in this system because I have no need for one. Um, I realized that when I was putting the system together that I was going to be installing Windows from USB 3 anyway for the speed. And that was really the only thing that I could really think of that I absolutely needed a disk for. I have other disk drives in my house if I have really old games or something that I need to, you know, make a copy of the disk for. But once I do that, I have a digital copy anyway. And I do that for all my old games now. If I find an old game, I basically take the disk, put it in one of my systems that does have a drive, make an image of that disk, and then just store it for myself locally in a digital format so I never actually have to use the disk ever again. So yeah. Um, there's really no need for me to have an optical drive in this system. Uh, moving on back, you can see the dual 120mm radiator here for the uh, Corsair H100i. Um, up top, I don't know if you guys can see at the angle you're at, but there's the two um, SPL, um, whatever, or SPI, the, the basic edition of the, the static pressure fans that Corsair includes, are in the top blowing down. Then I have two Bit Phoenix, uh, I believe they're Spectre Pro fans, the LED green fans here. Um, basically, they're just the green ones, um, and they're also pointing down. So we've got a push-pull configuration on the H100i, pushing air into the case, so we're getting the coolest air possible from outside of the case. Uh, then you've got the water cooling tubes coming down to the actual processor block here. Again, it's the H100i block. Uh, it's all an enclosed unit, so there's no custom fancy stuff in here yet. Um, under there, obviously, is my Intel 3930K processor. Right now, I just have it overclocked to 4 gigahertz. Um, nothing too, like, fancy. It is summertime here, and I really haven't had time to sit down and play with pushing my clocks very far. So, um, it's literally, like, a 100 megahertz overclock on that thing, for the most part. Um, because it does 3.9 with its own turbo boost, basically. So, nothing too special. Um, then on each side of that, you can see the, the two dims of memory here and the two dims of memory on the other side. It is an X79 chipset with eight dim memory support. So I've got four in there right now for a total of 16 gigabytes. Um, those are each four gigabyte dims, so I have four, eight, 12, 16. Um, and they are running at 1866 megahertz. I could have gone a little bit quicker maybe, but, uh, uh, 1866 is fine for me, and I mean, it does everything I need, and I don't need to be king of all the benchmarks in the world, or I would have four Titans. Um, speaking of which, moving on down, I got my GTX Titan 1 and my GTX Titan 2 in SLI configuration, using the included Gigabyte 3 way SLI bridge that came with my motherboard. Uh, I'm using that one instead of the dual one, basically because it's a hard bridge, so it's got a PCB to it, and I think it looks really good compared to the uh, flexible two-way SLI bridges. That being said, 
EVGA just released some premium SLI bridges that look really nice, and I think I'll probably pick up a three-way one just so I can keep this spacing with my cards, and I'll probably run that. Um, both of these are in uh, PCI Express 3.0 X16 slots on the motherboard. Um, that's the Gigabyte uh, GA X79 UP4 motherboard. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. Um, but basically, uh, technically, Intel kind of revised their specification for the 3930K processor and stated that it is only PCI Express 2.0 compliant. So these cards are running at 16x 2.0 speeds instead of 16x 3.0 speeds. But that is plenty of bandwidth for two Titans, so nothing to worry about there. I'm not losing any performance right now. There is an unsupported fix that EVGA, no, sorry, NVIDIA released that enables 3.0 on this board. It kind of forces it, but I run into some stability issues when I'm using that, um, and I have had them both running at 16x 3.0, but like I said, stability issues, not good for now. So I'm probably just going to wait for an updated processor to throw on this motherboard when maybe the Ivy Bridge E chips come out or, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, so that's basically motherboard, RAM, processor, graphics cards. You guys can see here, I've started putting in some of my uh, sleeve cable. This is just the BitPhoenix cable extensions that are individually sleeved. I'm going to be doing the 8-pin ones as well. I have those cables on order. I'm going to be doing the 24-pin cable here. Um, maybe I'll do all the little fan pins and SATA connector pins as well. Or pins, cables, sorry. Um, but I'm not sure about that. I've done the best I can up here when it comes to cable management, all the wires for the fans connected to the H100i as well as the USB cable and the power cable um, and the, the tie-in cable from the H100i to the Corsair AX1200i power supply in the bottom. Um, they're actually connected via USB to the motherboard directly using one of the ports down in the bottom here so that you can, you know, control the, the RPM of the fans and the you know, profiles, uh, high performance, quiet performance, balanced performance, all that of the H100i. Uh, for the power supply, basically, you can view the uh, load usage live, see how much power it's using, how much power it's drawing from the wall. Um, you can see the efficiency. You can enable um, uh, multi-rail support. There's lots and lots of stuff that you can do with this. I apologize for saying oh, a whole bunch here. I'm trying to cover as much as I can as quickly as possible in this little segment here. And you guys can see all the, well, maybe not, maybe if I do this, um, that gives you some more light maybe down there. Uh, but you can see that I have all the cables connected to the power supply, obviously. And then there is the um, BitPhoenix 140mm Spectre Pro fan on the back in green. So let me grab a power cable for you guys, and I'll start this system up here so you can just see what it looks like when it is all lit up. Alright, hey there guys, so we got the system turned on, hopefully you guys can tell, I know I've got natural light coming in from behind the system, not the greatest lighting environment for this video, however, uh, I've got the system plugged in, you can see the green fans on the top, maybe you can see the green fan on the back there, yeah, you can see it a little bit back that way, uh, you can see the two logos on the uh, Titans both light up, and then the actual Corsair H100i logo lights up as well there for, uh, basically right there. Um, it lights up green as well. You can change that however you want color-wise. It's got an RGB LED in it, so you can do whatever you want in that regard when it comes to color. Um, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'll shut up for a second, and you guys can maybe listen to the difference in sound between the on and off shots here, because I'll shut it off as I do this, so just take a listen. So that's the on and the off, um, and you can see the difference in lighting there as well, obviously. Um, and I do, okay, I do have a ceiling fan running right now as well, right above the camera in the case, so it's uh, it's a little bit, it's causing some noise, but hopefully you can tell the difference there. I'll turn it back on again, and you can actually hear what the fans sound like when they first spin up, and that's basically what their maximum uh, volume is, so.
and then they settle down to the sound that they're at now, basically. Um, I do have the performance settings set to performance, so these aren't running as quiet as they possibly could, but um, that gives you guys a pretty good representation of my system so far. Uh, basically, if you want to know what the water cooling custom loop I'm going to do is going to look like, imagine a 480 millimeter radiator um, in the top here, basically, going all the way along the top, much like the uh, Corsair H100i is now, but longer out to about here. Um, then I'm going to have a, uh, basically, this is, this is how I'm envisioning it. So it's going to be, a radiator is going to come down to the uh, processor, processor is going to come to the first graphics card, sec uh, first graphics card to the second graphics card, second graphics card down to the next res or, uh, the next radiator, which will be a quad radiator in the bottom here, um, and then the quad radiator will likely go into the reservoir, which will be mounted here, um, and then the reservoir to the pump and pump back to the radiator in the top. Um, hopefully that's something I'll be able to pull off. Uh, it may get changed around a little bit, but um, we'll see when I actually get the components. So, yeah, thanks for watching. That's kind of the overview. If you guys have any questions about the build at all, let me know, and I will do my very, very best to respond to you as well as I can. Um, and make sure to uh, check out, uh, if, you're, if you're in Canada and you're looking for computer parts and stuff, especially if you're in Western Canada, check out uh, www.memoryexpress.com. Um, I purchased basically all of my stuff that you see here through them. They have been, actually, I literally purchased everything you see here through them. So they have been absolutely awesome to me. They have extremely competitive pricing, and I honestly think they have probably the best customer service and the best price beat policy in Canada. Um, they do 25% of the difference, unlike everyone else, who I believe pretty much only does 10% of the difference. So yeah, definitely check them out. They have a lot of stock. Um, if they don't have it, they can special order it for you in all likelihood. So um, yeah, definitely check them out at www.memoryexpress.com.